there's an entire narrative that Bitcoin needs to be a reserve currency for it to actually fare well. I don't think so. I think Bitcoin will succeed even if it doesn't become a reserve currency. It doesn't have to achieve that level for it to actually maintain its dominance. It doesn't have to reach that level also for people to actually accept it. But if you've noticed and followed the trend, the acceptance of Bitcoin over a period of time is faster than how the internet has been accepted or has been adopted. Hey guys, so there's so much predictions about Bitcoin and I want to unpack that and talk about that in this video as well and one of the reasons why I think there's so much predictions about Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies as well on where it could actually go how high it could actually go because it's so new so game-changing because there's really no precedent for this we're all trying to grasp or we're all trying to also get where it could possibly be headed based on several assumptions having had the chance to invest in the stock market for over a decade predictions this is not something new uh, primarily for the cryptocurrency market but in the stock market it gets defined more because there are models on how you could actually actually compute for the fair value of the stock. Some people just use straight price to earnings ratio and try to compare it to the industry and try to superimpose it to the stocks that they're trying to analyze. Some use uh, DCF. But what I'm trying to say is there's a lot of methodologies on how you can compute for the value of a certain stock and get its intrinsic value. Or even if you're trying to look at, do I buy it now? It's easy for you to actually see that like for Tesla, okay, how many cars did Tesla produce last year? How many are they producing now? And what will be the effect of the gigafactories that they have in Berlin, in Austin, and in China, etc. to the overall number of cars that they can actually sell? And you could actually think that, okay, based on that, this is how much they could actually earn per car and then you can start to compute it back on what the value could actually be. However, for cryptocurrencies, that's not the case. Especially for a lot of the ones that are just starting out. Especially for those blockchains that are currently in development. Those blockchains that are still trying to have apps being built on it as well. And because Bitcoin also, given that it had a lot of movement, and volatility over the past decade. We've seen it in 2017 go as high as 19, 20,000, then crash once again. Then we've seen it start to rebound a year after that, but drop once again and really just consolidate over those past few years. Then when the illness hit last year, we saw it correct massively again. Then after, we started to see it push back to 20,000 last year. And this year, we've seen it go to around 64,000, then correct to 28, then go to as high as 69,000. And a lot of people have been doing different types of predictions based on this. And there's so many ways on how people could look at um, how they could predict it. A lot of people are looking at on-chain analytics, on-chain metrics, on how Bitcoin has been moving in exchanges or the number of people who have been huddling or the activity of whales also. Are they accumulating more or actually disposing? People are actually looking also at the number of wallets that have been not transacting their Bitcoin but the percentage of them that have been buying as well. So there's a lot of ways that people are trying to somehow get what the price could be based on on-chain analytics and what's very very prominent from plan b his stock to flow model he's using that particular model which was based also on commodities and the scarcity of commodities and superimposing it for bitcoin and given the scarcity and the demand for Bitcoin, certain price levels could be hit on top of that. I think part and parcel of those predictions were trying to interlace a target of around 135. In other models, was a high of around 280,000 US dollars per Bitcoin, which imputes a very, very high upside. And then there are other people also that are trying to compute it based on the halving cycle that every four years, uh, the number of Bitcoin that gets mined is slashed by half, meaning part of its code means that it becomes more scarce and it becomes harder to get Bitcoin as compared to the years before that. Here's what I want to say also in line with that. The harder it is to mine Bitcoin, that actually means that for every Bitcoin you mine, 
it really has lesser impact also on the supply of Bitcoin. And there's so much dynamics here. Eh? That's why it's harder to make an established model because if you look at it also before, if you look at it from the stock to flow model or you even look at it from on the level of the halving cycle, a couple of years back, majority of the people investing in Bitcoin were retailers. Uh, truth be told, it was basically retailers. But now, we're seeing a hodgepodge of people who are in it. You have retailers, financial institutions, corporations trying to add it to their balance sheets. And we're now starting to see also you know, sovereign funds also start to look at it or trying to have positions into the cryptocurrency market space that it's not anymore that should be ignored. And then you have ETFs coming into the mix and it's starting to become more mainstream. That being said, I think that places a bit of a pickle to a lot of the models that we have. This is what I do know that as Bitcoin's market cap gets bigger, it becomes less volatile. As Bitcoin's market cap gets bigger also, the amount of money that is required for it to continually push up will also become bigger. I'm filming this December 2021 that there's still volatility in Bitcoin. I really believe that the larger the market cap is, the lesser volatile it will be. It still will be more volatile than traditional stocks. It still will be more volatile than the other asset classes that we have learned to invest in. But no one can make a exact prediction on where Bitcoin will be or the cryptocurrency market will be at a specific place at a specific time because at the end of the day, everything that we see is still driven by market forces. Everything that we see is still driven by supply and demand. And we could see it somehow be close to a target, then suddenly a negative news item could just bring the markets down, cause it to actually crash and go lower also. And it happened last April that when everyone was getting bullish about it because Tesla started to buy uh, Bitcoin and Elon Musk was one of the biggest proponents of cryptocurrencies at the start of the year, China banned Bitcoin mining and that fund dropped the hash rate. And while all of that was going on, Bitcoin's price also started to drop. So I really believe that over the short term, whatever the headline is, whatever the narrative is, whatever causes sentiment to shift, either on a fearful note, which will cause people to sell, either on an optimistic note that will cause people to buy higher, that will be the prevailing theme. And that's why I've said this in several videos that if you're looking at it from a broader perspective, then the day-to-day -day fluctuations shouldn't bother you. The day-to-day -day fluctuations should not make you scared because at the end of the day, the day-to-day -day fluctuations does not change the technology of Bitcoin. I'm not looking at a specific price. I'm not looking at a specific area where Bitcoin could actually land uh, later on. But I, I really believe that as the technology continues to develop and as a lot of people understand it more and because it's very, very scarce, it will put an amount of buying pressure attached to it. And what's interesting is that just comparing it from a market cap point of view, if it challenges gold and if it's really digital gold, and if it tries to gun to get to at least 10 trillion in terms of market cap, then from 50,000, 500,000 does not feel far off. And I like this thought that there's only 21 million Bitcoins available. And when you try to analyze it and when you try to think about it, there's more millionaires around the world than the amount of Bitcoin that's possible to buy. What does that mean? It actually means that not all millionaires in the world will have one whole Bitcoin that will place an amount of buying pressure. Why am I saying this? Don't focus on price predictions because if people knew exactly what it could be, what it should be, and what price it would be, then that large amount of people would be massively rich. If there's one hack on how you could pinpoint an exact price of a security or a crypto over a period of time, then someone would have discovered it. But it's it's not the case. You need something that will anchor you, that will cause you to buy it in the midst of the volatility, in the midst of fear, uncertainty, and doubt. That if you see it drop and you believe it's valuable than the price that it has dropped into, then that should allow you to buy. So just giving you some parameters on how maybe you could analyze how Bitcoin will be is that look at the market cap, look at how far it is still to where gold is. The further it is still from gold, that's the amount of upside that it could possibly have. Second, look at the amount of adoption. The fact that a lot of people don't understand it yet, the fact that a lot of people call it a scam, a lot of people aren't getting into it yet, tells you that when all of them 
later on start to come in, they will have to buy it at the price that it's currently at at that particular point in time. And I like what Michael Saylor said that you buy Bitcoin based on the level of conviction that you have. That will be the price that you will deserve Bitcoin for, meaning those who took the risk, those who took the time to be able to study it earlier, they are the ones that had the conviction to buy it at a much lower price and held it through the volatility. And at some point later on, when there will be a larger amount of adoption that people start to understand what Bitcoin actually is, when they start buying it, to all of us right now, December 2021, it will seem like a very, very high price, but the majority of the population, because that's when they get it, they will have no choice but to buy it at that relatively high level. And please do remember that when a lot of people who own their Bitcoin won't be selling and they're just hodling it, it places a larger buying demand and prices will just continually go up. There's an entire narrative that Bitcoin needs to be a reserve currency for it to actually fare well. I don't think so. I think Bitcoin will succeed even if it doesn't become a reserve currency. It doesn't have to achieve that level for it to actually maintain its dominance. It doesn't have to reach that level also for people to actually accept it. But if you've noticed and followed the trend, the acceptance of Bitcoin over a period of time is faster than how the internet has been accepted or has been adopted. When that gets bigger, focus on the adoption, focus on the technology because the price will just be a byproduct of that. Don't focus on price predictions, focus on the technology, focus on what your buying strategy is, focus on what your timeline is, and just focus on double downing on what you understand. And if this makes sense to you and you want to invest in cryptocurrencies, check out Binance. I put them in the description below. It's pinned in the comment section as well. Check them out. They're the largest cryptocurrency exchange in the world. I also have links below for the NFTs that I have in Binance. Check them out if you want to collect and have a piece of what I have for you guys. And also for those who want to learn about technical analysis, we have a recorded course that you can study on it was recorded via zoom check it out down below you can watch it at your own convenience and i've also written books about the stock market so there do you have any price predictions for bitcoin i'm, I'm just so curious do you think it's currently undervalued right now put it in the comment section below i want to hear your thoughts i want to hear your ideas about it and let me know at this point are you still buying bitcoin or do you, do you think it's higher and you're going to focus on other altcoins as well and I guess that's it. I hope you guys learned a lot from this video. I hope that it was something that was enjoyable for all of you. And I hope that it was something that gave you value. If you have not subscribed yet, subscribe, hit the like button, and smash the bell so you get updated every time I come up with new content about investing. So this is Marvin Germo. I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon and God bless you all. Mm -hmm.